him. They are partisan because there are many Mexican-Americans in the Las Vegas area. You can hear them greeting their champion now. He has been a popular champion, perhaps because he beat the great Carlos Zarate, who was truly an authentic Mexican boxing hero, and great respect was gained by Pintor for winning the crown from him. He says he is willing to fight Jeff Chandler, the WBA champion, who challenged him at the end of his fight yesterday here on CBS. He said he wanted Pintor. The Pintor people say they are willing to fight Chandler, but not in Philadelphia. So while he does plan to move up to the super bantamweight ranks, he is still willing to try to fight again at 118 pounds and says that he is ready for Chandler. Now, of course, Brandifo has different ideas. He hopes to take the crown, and then it would be his decision whether or not to unify the title against the WBA champion, Jeff Chandler of Philadelphia. And so, the fighters are in the ring. We'll be ready for round one from Las Vegas in just a moment. Jim Ryan, Sean O'Grady, and Gil Clancy ready to go here for this WBC Bantamweight fight. Let's join the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon. For the WBC Bantamweight Championship of the World. And presenting to you the challenger from Caracas, Venezuela. A fine record, 15 knockouts in his 28 wins in 30 bouts. Wearing dark green velvet trunks. He weighs in at a trim. A trim and ready 118 pounds. A fine record of 33 knockouts in his 41 wins. And he is affectionately known as El Indio de Guatemala in Mexico. The WBC Panama champion of the world, Lupe Guadalupe Pintor. 15 rounds. Joey Curtis now to get instructions. He is the referee in charge. at the tail of the tape for this fight. Avito Rengifo, a veteran boxer who fought mainly as a flyweight and a super flyweight until his recent move into the bantamweight ranks, weighed in at 117. Pintor, as we mentioned, having difficulty again making the weight, but was there at 118 at this morning's weigh-in at 6 a.m. today and uh, is ready to go to defend his crown one more time. The mariachi band brought him into the ring. He was greeted by the partisan Mexican-American crowd here at the showboat in Las Vegas, Nevada. There is the champion, Lupe Pintor. Javito Rengifo fought for the WBC Super Flyweight title, was knocked out by Rafael Aronio. So this is his second try for a championship. He has moved up to 118 pounds. Round number one, the referee is Joey Curtis from Las Vegas, scoring by three judges at ringside on the 10-point must system. Chuck Minker, Paul Smith, and Dave Moretti, all from the state of Nevada. This is a big ring, 20 feet. They're fighting with eight-ounce Reyes gloves. And, uh, gentlemen, uh, how about the the ring as a factor today? We know Pintor is a boring-in kind of fighter, and we've seen the quickness of Rangifo. Any advantage to either fighter, Sean? I think the advantage, if, if any, is going to be to Rangifo. Uh, Pintor has got to get on the inside. He's got to be able to cut this ring off. Uh, Rangifo should be able to use that jab, move around Pintor. He's got to use that lateral movement. He's got to move from side to side. Pintor, like I said, was a typical Me Mexican fighter. He throws a lot of hooks, likes to stay right on the inside. That's where he's got to stay to beat Rangifo. Pintor in red with white trim. The challenger, Rangifo, in dark green velvet trunks. Uh, Tim, Rangifo threw that big right-hand bomb, and it looks like he really can punch. You know, another fact you were talking about the weight earlier, at the weigh-in, Pintor weighed 118. Probably now he's about 122, 123. He probably has a four or five pound weight advantage. That could make a big difference in the later rounds. And Rangifo, another point, uh, Rangifo is coming up from uh, the flyweight uh, ranks, which is 112 pounds. So Pintor will be much stronger. Challenger Rangifo from Venezuela. On the right of your screen, the champion Pintor from Mexico, Guajimalpa, Mexico. We saw yesterday on CBS Sports Saturday, he built himself a beautiful home right in the same slum neighborhood where he grew up. 
He didn't want to leave his people. So he built his own very nice home right there in that area near Mexico City. Lupe Pintor, sixth title defense. Yesterday you saw Jeff Chandler retain his WBA Bantamweight crown, and he says he wants Pintor next to unify. Less than a minute to go in round one. Tim, I don't know how well uh, Rengifo can take a punch, but if he can take a big punch, I think Pintor's in for a lot of trouble. This kid stands up real well, and he snaps his punches. What do you think, Sean? Right now, Rengifo is putting the pressure on Pintor. The reverse round is usually a feel-em-out round, but this is no feel-em-out round. Rengifo is going right toward him. I thought that Rangipo would try to box him, try to stay on the outside, but he's not. One thing about Pintor to be kept in mind, he is generally a slow starter. It's often the case that he'll, he'll lose the early rounds, four or five of them. But Rangipo trying to take advantage early here. Scored with two lefts. Final seconds of round one. Two. Live from Las Vegas, the WBC Bantamweight Championship, the champion Pintor on the left of your screen, the challenger, and Gifo on the right. Off to a good start in round one. Very intimidating crowd here in Las Vegas. The Mexican population here in Vegas is chanting uh, Mexico, Mexico. They're stomping their feet on, as they're chanting. Tim, what they call out at Notre Dame, the 12th man? <laughs> yes, indeed. And it certainly can be a factor, I think, as any uh, fighter will acknowledge. I'd like to have you fought a few fights in Oklahoma City, haven't you, Sean? Yes, sir, but they don't go Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> good left hand by a challenger, and he fought another one. The challenger, and Gifo on the attack. The champion with his back to the ropes above us. And Rangifo is pressing the fight. That's what he's got to win. That's what he's got to do to win this title. He's got to put the pressure on and he's got to take the title away from Pintor, the champion. Pintor is Indian. He's got Indio down the side of his uh, trunks. He's a Mexican Indian. Two good left hands again underneath and up top from the challenger Rangifo. First appearance outside of Venezuela, so somewhat of an unknown quantity, but uh, has shown already in a round and a half that he is a good, solid professional. 28 years of age. He's had 30 professional fights and 15 knockouts, and again he scores the combination. Rangufo is a very well-skilled fighter. He should throw those punches as straight as he's throwing them right now. Very well trained. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's the way he's got to connect. He's got to make the punches of Pintor go on the outside. He's got to come on the inside. That's what he's doing. He's trained by an old pal of Gil Clancy's, Chichi Torres. His manager is Rafito Cedeno. Well, Chichi told me for sure they're going to bring the title back to Venezuela. And Chichi's opinion is pretty good, I have to say that. And the kid does look good up to this point. Again, it's whether he can take that punishment that Pinto eventually is going to dish out in this fight. We're in round two, scheduled for 15, less than 30 seconds to go. Pinto are managed and trained by Julio Hernandez, who's had many champions, including Alexis Arguello and Ruben Olivares. That was a spectacular move by Pinto. He took a step back, planted his feet through his combination. Sean, we were both fooled by the strategy of Rangipo. We both thought he was going to box. He's right there toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pintor. I thought there would be much more jabs in this fight. Neither man's throwing a jab. They're throwing all hooks. Round three from Las Vegas, Nevada. The champion, Lupe Pintor, with his hands full against an unknown challenger, Jovito Rangipo from Venezuela, who has shown that he is determined here to try and end this fight early. He has been out wailing away since the opening bell. He is in green on the left of your screen. Pintor, a notoriously slow starter, is not being able to relax at all against Rengifo, so he's going to have to pick up the pace. Rengifo throws a very, very short left hook. So far, he's, be he's able to beat Pintor to the punch with that short left hook, and it's effective. As you said, Sean, he's a well-schooled fighter. 
Latour has learned a lot since I saw him fight last. Uh, he's able to move backwards now. He's able to move to the side. He wasn't before. He still uh, leaves his head sitting very still. He should move that head much more. 26-year-old champion Lupe Pintor, 41 wins, four losses at a draw for the ring magazine, 33 knockouts. As we commented, went the distance in his last two title defenses against very tough Alberto Davila and less tough Jose Ezequiel. Good right hand by the challenger. Pintor's hurt from that right hand. He's got a blank look on his face. Yes, he did get hurt, Sean. Got shook up pretty good. You notice how quickly referee Joe, Joey Curtis put in the break, and that's about the only clinch in a fight. He's doing a good job. Staying out of the way and letting these kids fight. And that's what they're doing. Good right hand by the champion, Pintor. His first real solid punch of the fight. Well, this is what we had to find out if Frank Epo can take those that punishment. I see that. Under a minute to go, round three. Rengifo has not let up. Rengifo keeps trying to, to establish control in this fight, but Pintor doesn't want him to take the control. That would make, that's what makes for a spectacular fight. One man Keep flurries, on then the other man comes back and flurries. They've been in the middle of the ring almost uh, from the, the beginning. Only one time has Pintor gone back to the ropes. Pintor has landed some heavy punches in this round so far. Keep on fighting. Let's go. Let's box. Under 30 seconds to go. Round three scheduled for 15 for the championship of the world. At 118 pounds. Right hand lead by Pintor score. Now to the body and up to the top. Good combination by Pintor. The champion lugging here in the final seconds of round three. Round number four for the WBC Bantamweight Championship. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sean O'Grady. It looks like we have ourselves a boxing match here today in Las Vegas. The champion Pintor rallying in round three after the challenger off to a surprisingly good start in the first two rounds. You know, you know, Sean, you and I have both seen Pinto many, many times. And I would say that now since he's the champion, he's improved about 50%. He used to fight with his face, just walk in there, no imagination. Winning that championship makes you a much better fighter. You're going to find that out when you go back in the ring. Absolutely. He has become more technical now. He holds his hands up much more than he did when I saw him in uh, his fights before he won the title. And in the last round, Pinto established control. Now Rangipo is backpedaling much more than he was earlier in the fight. He's been uh, hit by Pinto. He's tasted the power of Pinto. And now he's uh, fighting a little different fight. Good left hook by Pinto. Good combination by Pinto. Rangifo has to land that big right hand to get back and take the, take the play back away from Pintor again. Right now, Pintor is the stronger of the two. And when Rangifo punches, he punches going backwards. Pintor punches going in. He's moving in when he punches. He's a great champion. Referee Joey Curtis doing a good job here, keeping him at the distance. Oh, that's break. That's it. from the challenger landed and a right hand counter back from the champion. Rengifo tries to keep throwing that right hand on the chin as he just did then and missed it. He'd be better if he threw a couple of right hands underneath. That's it. He'd be able to hit the guy on the chin. That would open up the chin. The guy would go for his uh, body to protect his body. When he did, he'd leave his chin open. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a 30-second station break at the end of this fourth round. This is the kind of fight that Pintor likes. Rengifo is fighting Pintor's fight right now. Just punch for punch. Less than 30 seconds to go on the round, down to 20 now. Now there's blood coming from the mouth of Rangifo. 
He's got a small cut on his bottom lip. We'll be oh, back just here in Las Vegas, Nevada after this word from your local station. There is the champion, Lupe Pintor, who received two cuts, one over each eyebrow as they bumped heads here in round number four. Pintor started to go with the body a little bit more in the last round. When he did, he dropped his hands, and in came Rangifo's head. So we'll be watching those. They do not appear to be severe, but they could develop into a factor in the fight. Now here in the fifth round, Pintor should start getting loosened up. Well, the, the fact that he's cut is going to change his strategy a little bit. Now Pintor is going to let it all hang out. You know, anytime you get a little cut, it's like a paper tear. One more pop and it can open all the way. And that blood looks so bad to the judges. Good combination from Pintor. The challenger in the dark green trunks, top of your screen. The champion, Lupe Pintor of Mexico. Geeko with a slight cut on his lower lip, also suffered in round four. Thor knows that he is in a fight against this unknown challenger. Just recently moved into the top ten rankings by the WBC and only his fourth fight at this weight. That was a good combination by Pintor, and that hurt Rangifo. He hit him with a hook to the head. Rangifo pulled his hand up to block it, and he went right into that left. Uh, that right good right hand. Pintor wobbled the challenger. Pintor has the challenger on the ropes, sensing an opportunity to knock him out. Rangifo trying to cover up, none too successfully, as Pintor throws a barrage of punches. Pintor is using up a lot of energy in that, in that flurry. A lot of energy. Now Pintor has got Rangifo where he wants to. Rangifo has been hurt twice in this round. The big change was in the last round when Pintor took control of the last part of the round. Good jab by Pintor. Good right hand wobble the challenger right again. Hand. Right hand hurt him badly. That right hand knocked him out. He was out on his feet from that right hand. Rangifo wobbling but somehow staying up. Under a minute to go, round five. Well, one thing you can see, Rangifo still wants that championship. He's not falling down. He's going to have to be knocked down. And now Pintor has got Rangifo where he wants him. He can do anything now. He should go ahead and take him out because he is cut. Rangifo comes back with a right hand. Yes, he did. He got a good right hand in on the champion. But then he takes a right hand back from Pintor. Toe to toe in the fifth round. Like to alert our stations along the line. There'll be a 30-second station break at the end of this round. Gifo is backing up Pintor. Well, we have established he can take a punch, gentlemen, the challenger from Venezuela. Here he comes, banging the champion back to the ropes. We'll return after this word from your local stations. In the corner of the challenger, Javito Rengifo, they are working over him, and the referee, Joey Curtis, went in to take a look at his eyes, make sure that he was still in uh, full control of his senses, and he will carry on. And here's some action from that fifth round as the champion, Pintor and Red, really started to land the leather to the challenger, Rengifo, but could not get into the canvas. Pintor slow to come out as they were working on the cuts over both eyes that did not appear to get any worse in the fifth round. We're now into round six. Pintor should have no problem with those cuts over his eyes. He's got Arturo Cuyo Hernandez in his corner, and Hernandez, uh, 72 years old. He's been around boxing a long time. They call him Tormento because he's uh, so fiery. All right, we are in round number six of the scheduled 15-round WBC Bantamweight Championship break, fight. The champion, break, Lupe it. Pintor, with his hands full against the challenger from Venezuela. Now at the bottom of your screen, Javito Rangifo, Tim Ryan, Sean O'Grady, the WBA lightweight champion, and Gil Clancy describing the action to you as the champion, Pintor, is having himself a difficult afternoon's work thus far. But he did wobble the challenger in round five Unable to send him to the canvas, but he had him in trouble. No spelling salts was applied to the nose of Rangifo between the fifth and sixth round in the corner. 
He could still be out from that last uh, flurry at the end of the last round. Pintor hurts Pintor is some, landing some big punches on Pintor right now. And a big right big, hand big to the punches. ear of the champion. But Pintor is hurting him every time he hits him. Every time he lands a shot on Rangifo, Rangifo's eyes cross or he gets that blank stare into his face. There's now a cut under the right eye of the champion Pintor. Two slight cuts incurred in round four over both eyebrows. A little blood on the lower lip of the challenger and he just landed another big right hand to the face of the champion. Tim Rangifo got off to a, a big start and then Pintor came back, so I guess this fight's just about even right now. How have you got it scored? I've got three to Pintor and two to Rangifo, the first two to the challenger, the last three to the champion, but you can make a case for the challenger in round five as well. The, the challenger, Rangifo, wins the first part of the round, then Pintor comes back in the last part of the round. Pintor is a good, well-trained pro. Because he wins the last part of the round, that's what impresses the judges and they give him the round. You can see him bleeding in there. He's got a cut underneath his right eye, and under, I mean underneath his left eye, and cuts over both of his eyes. And now there's a cut underneath that right eye. Less than 30 seconds to go. Round number six. 118 pounders showing that they have punching power as well as the big guys. Pintor just missed the home run ball. That would have knocked him right out of the arena if it landed. And again in this round, Rangifo came out with a good strong floor at the first of the round. Now Pintor is taking over. We're in the final seconds of round six. Bantamweights on CBS. Yesterday, Jeff Chandler retaining his crown against Julian Solis. Today, Lupe Pintor trying to hold his WBC crown against a strong challenge of Jovito Rengifo, an unknown from Venezuela who has shown that he can fight. 28 years of age, 28 victories, two defeats, 15 knockouts, giving the challenge champion a hard time, although he's backed up by Pintor with a left jab. He got staggered with that left jab, Tim. Looks like the legs were starting to go. Now Rangifo is uh, carrying that left hand low as you talked about in the opening. I think the wear and tear of this fight has uh, Rangifo really, really tired because he's carrying those hands low. He's not, he doesn't appear to have any pep in his action. Sean, despite the fact that there was only a one pound difference at, at the weigh in, I would say that right now Pintor has about five or six pounds on him. And in this weight class, it's a lot of weight. He has Rangifo wobble again. He's ready to go. But got both fighters, Mucho Corazon. Let's break even. Let's break even. Let's break even. Let's Mucho Corazon. Much hard. Much hard. Yes, sir. You told me you should to study Spanish in school. Alex, <laughs> you got one hand free. Keep on banging there. Let's bang. Gifo has going for him in these circumstances where he has been wobbled by the champion. He's very good on his feet. He has excellent balance. And I think having taken some of the shots that he had without that good balance, he'd have been down on the canvas. Pintor working with good straight punches now, scoring to the challenger, Rengifo. This is a new Pintor. He really is a much improved fighter. Another good right hand that staggered the challenger. Good right hand back from Rengifo. He is a tough customer. blood from the lip of Rangifo now. When Rangifo gets hit, it sort of wakes him up. He doesn't really come alive until he gets hit, then he comes back with a good combination. He's tired though now. Rangifo is feeling the wear and tear. The Pintor crowd here in the sports pavilion exhorting their champion with chance of Mexico. Mexico. And Pintor responds with a flurry of combinations. Less than 30 Keep seconds on, to go. One half for that set. Round number seven. Let's get out. Let's break. Break even. Break Joey even. Curtis, the referee, breaking them, and a still wobbly challenger, Rendifo. Good right hand lead by the champion. And again, in the final seconds of the round, Pintor comes on strong. of the 
WBC Bantamweight Championship fight. The champion, Lupe Pintor of Mexico, on the left of your screen. The challenger who's been putting up quite a scrap, Ovito Rengifo from Venezuela. He was wobbled in the fifth round and again in the seventh, but refused to go down. Indeed, in between, had a strong round in number six. That's it. Come on. Tim Ryan with Sean O'Grady, the WBA lightweight champion, and our own Gil Clancy here at ringside. This fight is just a matter of time. Pintor has established total control now. They've done a good job in his corner on the cuts over the eyebrows of Pintor and under the right eye. from the champion Pintor. There goes Rendipo, who is backing up with a little off balance, and Pintor caught him with a left hand, and Rendipo went down for the first time. Tim, that's very strange. He got knocked out from a left jab, and he got staggered earlier in a fight by a jab. And the referee, Joey Curtis, has stopped this fight. And the challenger unhappy, and there is Chichi Torres, the trainer in, why have you stopped the fight? But the referee, Joey Curtis, evidently thinking Rangifo had had enough. And there are boos from a portion of this crowd. Crowd here, even though uh, it is largely a Lupe Pintor crowd. Well, Gil, what do you think? Uh, it was a left jab that sent him down, but I thought that the challenger, Rangifo, was backing away and that he was off balance when he took that punch. Oh, yeah, I don't think it was any vicious punch or anything that knocked him down. He did go down. And I, I would have to say that I'm a little surprised that the referee stopped the fight. Well, let's see it again. It was the first time he had been to the canvas, although he had been wobbled. There it was. It just a, just a straight left jab. There was no, no big damaging punch. But the referee is right on top of the action, and I have to take the referee's side. Red Gifo has taken a lot of punishment, and many times he's been out on his feet. I think the referee made a good choice, good decision. I'm for the protection of the fighter, and uh, I'd rather him stop it one second too soon than 10 seconds too, or 10 seconds too soon than one second too late. I don't think there's any disputing that. Uh, Sean, the only thing is that uh, this is a championship fight. There was there was not much evidence that Rangifo had been really seriously uh, uh, wrapped. He hadn't been down before, and uh, I think he deserves a chance at the title. But Joey Curtis, as you point out, has the right to protect the fighter as he sees it, and he has stopped the fight. So we'll uh, be back here in Las Vegas. Right now, we're going to return you to Brent Musburger in New York. 21 seconds into round number eight. Still trying to find out, trying to talk to We're back here at the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas with the referee in this fight, Joey Curtis from the state of Nevada. Joey, has some question about uh, why you stopped it because it was the first time he'd gone down. What was your uh, thinking? The last three rounds, he was absorbing some very, very bad head punches. And I thought at the time when he was knocked down, I looked at him and he didn't know where he, what he was doing. He was wobbling over the ring, and that's why I stopped the fight. Did you talk to him at all? Did you ask him? Or, what what indications him, did you use to determine that he couldn't continue? Are you okay? And I asked him if he was all right. He looked at me. His eyes was glassy, and he kept on wobbling in the ring. That's when I decided to stop the fight. Sean O'Grady made the point that you just did that in a couple of rounds earlier, he had been uh, wobbled and uh, taken some uh, good shots to the head. That was a part of your uh, reason for stopping, That's it, wasn't correct. it? That's correct, because, like I said before, before it wasn't as bad, but this, this last round where he was wobbling all over the place, that's why I stopped it. All right, Joey. Joey Curtis, the referee in uh, this championship fight as Lupe Pintor has retained his WBC Bantamweight crown for the sixth time. Right now, let's return to Brent Musburger in New York. Much, Howard, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is regretful always when a title is stripped from a boxer. It's better to either win or lose it in the ring. And that's going to happen between the two lightweights this afternoon. As Howard said, the number one, Noel.